I'm still sort of shocked when I eat a salty pimp. Big Gay Ice Cream started back in 2009 just as a sort of a lark. We didn't set out to build an ice cream business. I wanted to do something fun one summer, and an ice cream truck presented itself to me through a friend. So I became an ice cream trucker. Brian and I met back in 2006, and our first date was at Barnes & Noble. In 2009, we started Big Gay Ice Cream Truck. Now we have two shops and we're about to open one in Los Angeles as well. My background was playing the bassoon. I moved to New York to go to Manhattan School of Music and then played in different freelance classical groups here and in Boston. Rather than call it Doug's Big Ice Cream Truck or Doug and Brian's whatever, uh, I just called it the Big Gay Ice Cream Truck because the whole thing seemed kind of gay. (laughs) <laughs> you know, it was a middle-aged guy on an ice cream truck that was going to sell high-end toppings in the streets of New York. When it comes to soft serve, I really enjoy the Americana aspect of it. That's how we grew up. We had soft serve in the summers. I got vanilla with rainbow sprinkles. It's a cobbler. It's very good. I recommend it. Now, one of the big differences uh, between hard pack ice cream and soft serve is the temperature that they're served at. Hard pack, it's well below freezing. If you put olive oil on something that's zero degrees, it takes five or six seconds before it warms up enough that you actually taste the olive oil. When you're putting olive oil on soft serve, you're putting it on something that's about 20 degrees, so pretty much instantly you are tasting what's on the ice cream. And lastly, a decent sprinkling of malt and salt. So I love this idea that you're getting a taste and a texture that you don't usually associate with ice cream. That first summer, it never even occurred to me that people like ordering things by name or that it made sense to do that. One of the first combinations was dulce de leche, vanilla wafers. I started grinding them up. It became this kind of pretty golden cone. We went to Twitter and asked if anyone wanted to name the cone. And a person suggested the Golden Girl. That's when Brian changed it to B. Arthur. And the reason we went with B of the Golden Girls was because her will had just been read. And she left more than a quarter of a million dollars to Ali Forney Center, which is an LGBT shelter for homeless teens. So we named a cone after her. The Salty Pimp. It's vanilla ice cream, uh, dulce de leche on it then sea salt on it, and then the whole thing is chocolate dipped. It was the trickiest cone I did at the time, and I thought, oh, it's the most pimped out, and it's salty. It does look good. (laughs) I feel like ice cream is a universal food. You don't need teeth to eat ice cream. So you can be eight months old, you can be 108 years old, you can be the richest man in America, or you can be the poorest man and afford it with pocket change. So I see being an ice cream man as being a salesman to everyone. The main thing of importance besides the taste is the experience of having ice cream. That means fun. Do you love Salty Pimps as much as I do? Well then, tweet at us. Use at Big Gay Ice Cream, at Epicurious, and hashtag Epicuriosity.